Hi, my name is Maria. I am a math specialist and an educational therapist, and I provide academic intervention to math students. I also provide professional development to teachers, uh, focusing primarily on building fact fluency and number sense. One of my favorite ways of building fact fluency and number sense has always been to play math games. And during this time of remote learning, I don't really want to keep this distance part from continuing to play math games and students continuing to get the benefits of playing math games. So what I've been doing is I've been adapting my favorite math games to play them online through video conferencing software like Zoom and whiteboard sharing software like virtual whiteboard sharing software like BitPaper. I'm going to go through how I how I use those two technologies specifically, but you don't have to use either technology exactly, just ones like it, to play these games online. And I'm focusing in on multiplication facts, the times four facts, mostly because I already have a download of the game board for multiplication bump times four for you, ready, available to download if you click the link below. I'm going to walk you through the process of one, getting the download, and two, then importing the download into a virtual whiteboard and how you can play it when, during your online sessions. I'm going to go slow to make sure that you understand. It's not that hard. It just takes a second to get used to all the new tools. But I hope you stay with me and we'll figure it out together. Okay, so I'm actually going to start at this, what we call a landing page right here. And basically what I've done is I've made a website to make this download available to you for free. So you're going to get to this page, click the link in the description, and you're just going to get here to where it says click the mini lessons below. And the game board for multiplication facts, you can see here, multiplication bump partner game, is in the download. So you're going to click, you're going to put in your email, you're going to click send me the mini lessons, you're going to get an email asking you to confirm your email that you really want to join, and then you'll get the PDF. Once you get the PDF, it'll look a lot like this. You'll open it, there'll be a bunch of stuff, a bunch of different things, and in fact, we're going to go over, I'm going to make videos going over the other activities, but today we're focusing on the last one, which is multiplication bump. Now, this was a little tricky and it took me a minute to figure out how to do this, but this is how I figured out how to download just this page. So I went to print, I went to the print using system dialogue button, and I selected 22 out of 22 which means that I'm only going to print this page, which is the second to the last page. I'm going to click on the PDF button and save as PDF. I'm going to call it multi-bump. And, and what this allows me to do is just save this particular page. And once I do that, I'm going to go to my bit paper. All right, so here is bit paper. That's what it looks like. It's got the tools down at the bottom. I've talked about BitPaper before. BitPaper is just one example of a whiteboard, a virtual whiteboard software that you can use. BitPaper is free up to a point. I don't know. I think I think you can use it, but you have more uh, ability to save your BitPapers if you buy an account. I have the $8 a month one, which seems to be fine for me. And what you're gonna do is, so let's say that you're gonna play this game with your class or with your student, one-on-one -on -one student, whatever, however, whoever, whoever you're gonna play this with, you're gonna drag that multi-bump PDF into the bit paper just from wherever you have it saved. For whatever reason, I'm gonna try upload and expand. So if you wanna prep a little bit more before you have your students uh, come online and play with you, another thing you could do besides just up, um, drop, dragging and dropping the game board into something like BitPaper is to go to, here on BitPaper there's a number of tools. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to toggle the shape library and draw in filled shapes. Uh, sometimes you can let kids, depending on how many kids you have, you could pick things like hearts or whatever. There's lots of different choices here. I'm just doing circles because 
it's the first time we played it and I feel like I don't really want to spend forever. One option could be though this cute paper clip because often we play with paper clips and paper clips in real life and you're gonna pick two colors uh, to make paper clips. I'm gonna pick pink for myself. Ooh, that's fun. And basically you're gonna want 10 of your color. And when the, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make these for myself. And then when the students, my student opponent comes on, they can make 10 for themselves, picking their color first. And I'm just doing that because I wanna make sure that my students get to pick their color. If you are not inclined to even give them that much choice at this point in your remote learning journey, <laughs> you can uh, just pick for them. But this is one way to prep the board beforehand so you're not wasting time making. So you just see how long, it kind of took me a little bit long to make those, uh, make those decisions too. So let's say I have a student, I'm playing with a third grader who has ADHD and I cannot try and do kind of the process of coming up with paper clip color with him, for him. So I'm just gonna say, okay, well, his favorite color is orange. Let's just say, I know that. And I'm gonna make 10 for him. Oops, that one, last one was a little big. Uh, if you make a mistake in bit paper, Command Z is your friend. Command Z gets me out of lots of scrapes in bit paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So now we've set up a game and we've got these paper clips and I love that it looks like actual paper clips. So fun. And now I'm ready to play this game when I get my students on uh, something like Zoom. So you have two ways to go here. Once we are all on Zoom, I can either share this bit paper here and I have control over everything or uh, if I have a smaller group, like maybe one other kid or maybe two other kids, I can give them the bit paper URL in the chat in Zoom and they can go on and become a second, a second user or a third user. So for example, I gave them the, the URL to this one. I've hidden it in this video. But you can see here now there are two people in this bit paper because there are two little pens. Okay, and that's one way to have it so that both parties, you and whoever you're playing with, are able to participate. Now we're going to just focus on, and this is the other thing that's good about this too, is that you can just say we're just using this tool. This is the only tool we're using right now. We're only using this tool, the arrow tool, I think it's called, oh, the select four tool, uh, it, to move the paper clip to whatever number. And then the next part of this is that you actually want to pull up something like toytheater.com forward slash dice and this is going to allow you to make to get a should be a 12 sided die it's this green one here and you're going to roll it one at a time there are ads but i don't want that to keep you from playing and not uh, anything to worry about but they are there so my students have access to this whiteboard the virtual whiteboard because i gave them the url not every parent, teacher is going to do that, but in this case, I'm going to do that. If you had a class, you could just move for them. Like, oh, teacher versus student, I'm going to move for you. The dice, you can't have them throw, which is kind of a bummer. On Zoom, I'm going to go in and make the dice something I'm sharing. So this is a window that students can see through Zoom. So there's two windows to toggle between. Um, if a student can't toggle between the dice and the bit paper, I had a student who just can't do it. Um, I just tell her what the die, the die roll is and use that to make her next move. So we're going to toggle between the dice and the bit paper. I'm going to start by throwing the dice. It's my turn. One times four. That's the name of the game, multiplication bill. I'm going to go on one times four. My opponent, and, then, and again, it could be the whole class. It could just be one kid, four times two. Okay, their, their color, they're gonna move four times two is eight. And as we keep playing, this is the chance to build strategy. Four times two, one times, one times four, two times four, pretty easy. But four times four is a bit of a challenge. Uh, with this, if I get a kid who gets stuck on one, sometimes what I'll do is I'll get the pen out and I'll give them what I call a helper problem. If two times four is eight, then we're gonna, that's the double, right? Two times four. 
Now we're going to double the double. What happens if we double 2 times 4? We get 4 groups of 4 instead of 2 groups of 4. And that helps some kids go, oh, it's 16. That's a strategy we call doubling the double. And I will sometimes write the helper problems. It's kind of hard to write on here. I'm using my mouse. And I'm going to put it on 16. Student's going to throw again. 11. I had a student who figured out it was 11 just because it was the second to the last one. It wasn't times 12, it was times 11. However students figure out the uh, multiplication facts, I kind of encourage them to explain it to me as we go. A lot of kids will do 10 times 4 and 1 times 4. When I have, when I can put two paper clips on the same raindrop, that means that I uh, quote own it. I, when one of my students says I own it, and that means that no one else can can come on to this raindrop. That's it. It's mine. All right, four times three. It's my turn. Four times three is twelve. My class's turn. And my students' turn. Four times six. Uh, again, I might do a helper problem two times six and then double that. That one's a good one for doubling the double, which is 24. Not a lot of bumping happening. Very satisfying rolling noise though. Oh, five times four. And that's my turn, five times four. So see here, I am gonna I want to go in five times four, but there's already just one here. I get to bump them off. In real life, it's a lot more satisfying because you kind of just push it to the side. But now you can see they have five on the board here, still over here, not, sorry, not on the board here. And I have three not on the board here. And the ob there's lots of objectives that people can play to, but I always just stop the game when, we, when someone has run out of paper clips. So when they can put 10 paper clips, checkers, whatever object you're using, and they can put their 10 pieces on the board, that's when the game's over. Uh, that's something I developed. I have no idea what other people do. So I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Oh, I already have 40, so I don't get to go. Their turn. And I do that when I, whenever I hit the throw button, I always like repeat whose turn it is. <laughs> there, otherwise, you'll go nuts. All right, four times eleven. I think I have four times eleven. Oh gosh, I don't. But I'm gonna bump them. And that's it, that's the game. And not only is this a good practice with multiplication fact, just memory, because you're going back to the same facts over and over again, uh, this is also a way for you to develop strategies. So four times 10, how did you know? It's four groups of 10. Four times two, how did you know? T two groups of four, it's four and four. It's the double. And then I wanna highly encourage you when you play this with your students to use this double, the double strategy. And don't be afraid to write out this kind of little number string here, because that's super helpful to engage students to think about how those two f sets of facts are related. So that is multiplication bump. And if you don't have to use this game board, but I think it might save you some time. So you can download the game board by clicking the link below. If you want to learn more about playing another game adapted for remote learning, this time it is called the Staircase Game. It's a place value game. Click on this video to watch it next.